Good morning, it's Friday. At times I get a really stuffy nose right when I'm going to sleep or when I'm lying in bed for a while. So that has been making it take me like nearly two hours to fall asleep, definitely over one. And sometimes I don't have good self-control, so I'm on my phone. And when you're on your phone, I feel like that prolongs your sleep because it kind of, something about your phone, I feel like just makes you stay more alert and just kind of resets you falling asleep. My eggs are done. <laughs> I don't really do anything special with my eggs. I, I literally just throw them in and make sure that it hardens in all aspects before I'm done with it. I don't, I never understood that sunny side up stuff or whatever other egg kinds there are. I have realized recently that I have been taking poor care of my bike because I haven't cleaned my chain at all since I got it. And when I was doing my research online, people were saying that they clean their chain every three to 500 miles and I am over 3000 miles right now. So I bought some chain clean and chain loop. So I have cleaned my chain once in the past on my old motorcycle. So I think I'm still kind of getting used to this maintenance bit. I definitely would like to clean my chain as soon as possible, ideally this weekend, but it has been a not so great weather time right now. It rained yesterday and it's been around the 60s, which is a little cold for me. So I would like to clean my bike on a sunny, warm day. So I'm not sure if it will be this weekend, but even if the weather isn't perfect, maybe if it's like a tolerable weather, I should still do it because just as soon as possible would be great, uh, it's long overdue. I've purchased this brand before in the past, it's Motul. In the past, I was actually terrible and I cleaned my chain, but I didn't lube it up. I didn't experience any issues, but I have learned now that I definitely need lube. So I have the chain clean. I decided not to buy the little brush that they designed for cleaning your chain. Apparently there is one like that because it's like $13 and last time I just used a toothbrush and it worked fine. So I don't know if I have a manual toothbrush around the house for me to use, but if not, I can just buy some. And also aside from that, recently I've actually had a little bit of car trouble. Uh, last week, no, it's it was over a week ago. Yeah, so over a week ago when I got my haircut, right before my haircut when I was leaving early from work, my car was having trouble starting. So I would normally for the Prius, you press the brake and then you press the power button to start the engine. And I did that and then the dashboard lights came on. But when I tried to switch into reverse, nothing happened, the gear didn't change. And then also I noticed that when I pressed the brake, the light kind of flickered on the dashboard. So I sat there for a while and eventually my car did start, but this actually happened again, maybe two more times up till now. And it was random. My car was actually not failing like this every single time, but I brought it to Toyota to get it looked at. And I realized later that I was confident that the problem is that I will show you when I get to my car, but in the back seat, there is this little vent and apparently that draws air in to cool the battery. And I put Riley in her crate right above that vent. I have the seats come down and she lay lays over there and the vent is just basically right against the side door. So I'm assuming over six years of never having that cleaned and me having her for three years, there must have been a lot of air accumulation and then since the battery is not able to vent properly, it would get overheated because the first time I got my car to finally start, it said hybrid system overheat. So that kind of gave me a hint as to what it would be, but I am not a car person. I would love to be. I, I kind of decided that next time I would really like to do the work myself if I can. So when I brought it there, they told me about this vent sucking air in thing and suggested that I clean it. And I said, okay, let's do that. But the problem is they were charging $140 to essentially open the area up and just probably remove some hair off the filter. So that kind of felt ridiculous to be charged 140 for that. 
and I saw there's a great video on YouTube on how to do it yourself, but I guess my, my main concern was that I wanted this issue solved kind of immediately and I brought it to the dealership with the idea that hopefully after that day I would just not have to worry about it anymore. So even though I could have done it myself, it might have taken a little bit while longer because I needed to buy tools and then I would have to do the work myself and I just didn't feel like dealing with that that day because I suppose leading up to maintenance, I was like, I'm gonna get this issue solved that day. So to prolong it just didn't feel ideal for me at the time. Aside from that, they also said that one of my low beam lights was out. They called me maybe 30 minutes before I was gonna pick up my car and told me about it. And that is actually, I would assume, a very easy one to change out yourself. Plus when I checked online, the light bulb costs like $20. So I cannot imagine changing out the light bulb will be that expensive, but it's the same thing, I was like, all right, just do it. And they charged $70. And then for both of these tasks, labor was each $25. So the total cost for my visit was around 250, which I was not happy about. So definitely in the future, I would like to try some of these things myself, especially because there, you know, there's so much information available and I really do find it appealing to know a lot about cars just because you don't have to depend on places like these to do work on your car because they just rip you off and it's so much like they overcharge you like crazy. At least for my bike, maybe next time I would really like to change my oil myself and just the idea of cleaning my chain by myself feels good. Obviously cleaning your chain isn't anything too complicated. I just feel like some people would just want to be extremely hands off and not want to do it at all and get dirty and all that. So I'm actually pretty excited to go through with this whenever it is ideal. All right, so that vent right there is what has been clogging up. So when I zoom out like this, normally you see Riley right there, right? Um, during the maintenance, they just kind of... Sorry. <laughs> During the maintenance, they just kind of threw my crate back in the middle and I've been too lazy to move it. It's kind of blocking my rear view. But yeah, normally she sits right there. So I'm sure a lot of hair gets in there over the years with her jumping in and out and shaking sometimes and stuff like that. But I have also been listening to a fair amount of Bad Meets Evil. <clears throat> which is a duo of Royce to 5'9 and Eminem. And this album came out in 2011, so I have really been liking it. It has been super enjoyable to listen to. I found a lot of songs that I like, and I might be cutting it close for my meeting, so I gotta go. <sighs> Hi, it is Saturday morning. It's almost 11, and today I have this really unique thing to go to. So I'm not gonna lie, usually whenever it kind of approaches me needing to go somewhere for an event or a meetup, depending on the person or place, sometimes I just kind of start losing interest or maybe I start dreading it. So today kind of feels like it. I think it's also partially laziness, but about a month ago, the California Wolf Center sent me an invite to their holiday party and it was from 1 to 4 p.m. and it mentioned you know catch up on our progress and we'll have refreshments and then you can also see our wolves in their winter coats so initially I didn't really think I had interest in going because holiday party sounds like those two words just don't really bode well for me and I initially kind of passed, but then a couple days passed and I was like, you know what, this might be an interesting experience because when I went, it was the summer and the wolves were very skinny. They didn't really have a thick coat. But if I go now where it's colder, I thought maybe it would be pretty cool to see that. So I emailed one of the people there and I was like, man, I know the event is full, but do you guys have one more slot? And then he said that somebody canceled and that they had an invite. For After that exchange, I kind of feel like it would be really shitty for me to not go because I am taking somebody's space. I You had to RSVP for this. I think my 
unwillingness to go is really essentially just laziness so I will still go today that's why I'm awake <laughs> if I wasn't going I probably would have slept till 12 I've been having really bad sleeping schedules but yeah it's not like I have anything important to do today and even though staying home and enjoying whatever I'm doing is still a worthwhile use of my time I feel like this is just kind of a unique opportunity I would just be really curious to see how many wolves we'll get to see because I do admit when I went for my private tour I was a little disappointed because I only saw two and when we went to the other pen there was there was a few that I saw at a distance that I would have loved to see up close but I don't know if that would change today the main reason I got an invite is because when I signed up for the private tour I think it was like 50 I don't know, 50 to $70 or something like that. And if you signed up for one of their yearly membership things, it would make the total private tour cost, including membership cost, down to like five to $10 cheaper. So I decided why not? I'm saving money. If I sign up for this membership and I save money, then why not? So that's kind of why I got the invite because when people see that I went to a wolf center or that I'm attending this holiday party, Sometimes they just kind of assume I'm super interested in animals and all that and they're great But I've never had a particular interest in wolves This was just something that I was curious to see maybe once but it wasn't something I would be passionate about So I'm kind of going just for the experience, but I do kind of look forward to it Although it might be cold today and I think it might rain in Julian today But I am not going to let that deter me I am back! Alright, I am here for the holiday party. I actually don't know how many people they limited it to. So right now there's only one woman in front of me. And we are waiting for others to arrive and then she said we're gonna caravan through. Unfortunately, my car is still having issues. Um, I'm actually kind of pissed about it because I I think I'm kind of done with dealerships because of being overpriced and whatnot because on Wednesday I paid $253 and didn't even get my car fixed because they were charging $150 to diagnose so I was like fuck that. It was weird because I was really confident one of the things they did would fix it but my car is still not always starting the engine every time I turn it on. So right before I left to come here initially when I was planning like I always do, I was like, I'm gonna have to get in my car maybe 30 minutes before I leave and start trying to turn it on just to make sure that by the time I do leave, I won't be late. So it took me maybe five minutes. It wasn't, for now, my car hasn't been ridiculous where it takes like 30 minutes to start. So far, it's always been under 10 minutes. I kind of bed a little just to make it here on time but I am a little bit early which is kind of what I think they wanted you to do because you know they have they want people to wait out here before they escort us through because the wolf center is actually kind of through a private road and it's like stuck in the mountains where nobody really knows about it so it was kind of an extensive drive up I actually called this auto shop I called a few places. The first place, which is really highly rated right by my house, they said 117 to diagnose. And I am not, I know I'm not a mechanic, but I just get the feeling that whatever is wrong with my car won't take an hour to diagnose. So I feel like a lot of these rates, it's just kind of assuming they will take up to an hour to diagnose your car. I still think over $100 to figure out the issue with my car is ridiculous because I just get the feeling that it's not going to take more than 30 minutes or something. The Alpine Auto Repair, they said they can bump it down to 30 minutes for $60. And I was like, great, I will do that. So I will bring my car in on Monday morning. I decided I wanted to do it today, but I would have to do it after the party and they close at four, so can't really do that. I guess the slight annoying thing is since Alpine is 30 minutes from my house, when I bring it in, I kind of have to fuck around there. <laughs> and it might get boring, but I, I just want to not be ripped off. I hate dealing with dealership stuff. It does kind of bug me and upset me that 
I spent so much on Wednesday and I don't even feel good about the service that I got from them. I do hope this gets fixed soon though because I don't want to have car troubles like this, especially during my break. You need that reliable car, you know, right? And aside from this, I have not really had many issues with my car at all. I actually love my car. Uh, I've had it for six years now and oh, we're going. And uh, so they are kind of getting up there in age, but um, like John said, in captivity, they can live to be 12 to 15 years. Um, in the wild, only five to seven though. So as far as wild standards, they're getting up there. Now they are a breeding pair, um, but they haven't produced any pups so far. Um, they have pups There's only one breeding season three years. So that's January through March. And then their gestation is two months long, so they have the chance to be four And they're just going crazy marking up their territory because, um, I don't know, maybe someone's wearing perfume or something that they feel like they need to um, remind us that this is not our territory but theirs. They might think that all of us coming up, we don't feed them any livestock, so they don't get beef or goat or horse because we don't, get, we don't want them to get a piece of livestock and then think that's a good option for for food and then we also um, don't train them or socialize them with humans and really marking this territory yeah. my gosh <laughs> <sighs> I am leaving the party right now. It is three o'clock. And the party is supposed to go until 4 o'clock, but I pretty much got what I came for. <laughs> I wanted to see the wolves and definitely today was way better than my private tour. They were out and about and their coats were so thick and full. They are so beautiful, but <coughs> as expected, it was kind of interesting. Uh, there were definitely a lot of older people there which is fine. There were a few kids there and for pretty much any gathering like this, I would always prefer for there to be less kids or none because kids nowadays are obnoxious and that is because parents allow them to behave that way in public, which is totally unacceptable, but I can't discipline anybody anymore. That's being mean and actually, this is completely unrelated, but I just wanted to mention it really quick. I'm driving down from the center, so it's going to be super bumpy. Um, I was watching... Oh, I need to slow down. <laughs> I was watching a video on Ramses, who is the carry player on Virtus Pro, my favorite team. I am trying to go as slow as possible. I'm going five, I'm going five miles per hour. But he had a small bio video up on YouTube made by made in conjunction with LG, I believe. And I just thought it was a little bit sad because there was a segment of his video where he was saying how he will never refuse to take a picture with a fan or he won't refuse to sign stuff if people approach him because he doesn't want to decline and be rude. And I don't like it when people say that stuff because that means you are placing somebody else's desires above your own comfort and I just feel like that's not the right way to look at things. Seeing him say that if I decline then I'm rude, it's kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Hopefully he learns or grows up to know that it's fine to say no. Saying no is not rude. Placing your comfort and what you prefer above 
some random strangers is always, always the better choice. So I guess the party was kind of as expected. I was kind of like a little ghost there. I literally talked to nobody except this one woman who kind of asked me if I got good pictures and I told her I got good video because I actually didn't take that many pictures. I feel like the pictures just look so crappy behind a fence. Even if you are focused on the wolf, that was something I kind of forgot initially. Um, I'm not used to using manual focus on my camera. So when I realized that I had to switch, I'm glad that I remembered it earlier because last time when I came, last time when I came here, I was using autofocus for a while and that shit focuses on the fence because it's on the foreground. So I think I got some great footage today and their refreshments were just, you know, water, coffee, tea, maybe a few pastries and pie. And I had two slices of pie. I sometimes eating pie nowadays this late in my life feels a little weird because I never had pie really in the first 25 years of my life I never really had pie pie is just not something my my Chinese parents give a fuck about so we never ate it I was never interested to try it it sounded like a Thanksgiving American thing so I just didn't care about it but some good pie tends to be very delicious and I was disappointed to see that they did not get pie from the Julian Pie Company that is the place that I always get my pie whenever I go riding up to Santa Isabel they have a little shop there so I always get it as like my little pit stop to take a break and eat and let my hands relax a little bit let my body calm down because you're so tense when, well you're not tense when you're riding you don't want to be but being in that one position the whole time does get rough all right, I am home and I am cooking right now. It took quite a bit of willpower not to get some salad on the way home. So I'm cooking some salmon. I've been eating salmon kind of strictly for my meat lately, mainly because I'm cooking it in a very unorthodox manner. I'm stir frying it. <laughs> and honestly, who cares? It turns out great. I like it. So I'm making broccoli, salmon, cabbage, and I'm gonna put in some onions because those are kind of the last few ingredients I have before I need to order from the grocery store again. But today is actually a special day. Today, Saturday, December 1st, is my mom's birthday. So, I need to call her and wish her a happy birthday, so I'm gonna do just that. Hopefully they pick up. Hey, Mimi. Oh, hi, is mommy there? Oh, mommy, thank you. Oh, hi. Hello, uh -huh. mommy, Mimi. So, everything's okay, right? In uh, San Diego? Yeah, everything's fine. Good, great, okay. Mama, Mimi, I'm going to get in. Hello, oh, mommy, Sandra Kwila. Oh, it's okay. 